Hi guys, Will Terry here, and this video is going to be called The Best Way to Make Good Work Great. And um, you're looking at a piece here from Cassidy. Um, I'm going to assume that Cassidy is a girl, because um, I think Cassidy is a girl's name. Anyway, um, she invited me to um, give her a critique in a very nice email um, that I got. And when I looked at her work, I thought this would make a good video because... Um, it's really good. There's some really good things happening here, and I could see a, just a few little things that could make it a lot better. Um, so I asked for permission and got permission to actually make a video of it. So that's what I'm going to do today. And um, so the first thing in just looking at this, uh, one thing that I notice is the there's really nice drawing going on, um, and there's really nice texture and rendering. And um, there's really, to me, there's really three, three components that you need to make a really good um, crafted piece of art. And that, I mean, I guess four if you include the concept, but as far as just the craft goes, you need, like I mentioned, uh, really good drawing, really good rendering. But before the drawing and the rendering, you need good design. And what I'm seeing in here are um, some fundamental problems with design. And I, and I saw this throughout the website. Some of the pieces are designed better than others. Um, this was one that I looked at that I thought I could really help out. So I'm just going to move to doing that right now. And what, what I'm seeing, um, and hopefully you guys that are watching this, you might be able to kind of already identify what I'm thinking of here. Uh, we've got this main character uh, right here holding a staff. But the staff is kind of getting lost. And so there's there's mainly a value pattern problem. And um, then we've got uh, we've got uh, value contrast. Some of the strongest value contrast is right here. We've got really strong darks up in the up in this area. We've got a really strong dark spot there. And of course the shadow area here. Um, but where we're lacking contrast is on like one main focal point area, which to me would be, you know, the relationship of this guy right here, um, the main character. And, but then when you have a main element that that character is holding, this right here is getting lost. Um, and then maybe another problem is that there's really high contrast on, you know, these, anytime you have um, triangulated spikes or sharp objects, um, they're gonna they're gonna evoke a sense of danger. Um, they're also going to get tend to get more attention. So your you know your eyes gonna go to those areas. Plus we're we're dealing with a, um, a creature, and creatures are more interesting than inanimate objects. So our eye is gonna go to you know when when I look at it right now I I say you've got multiple focal points. Probably these these main focal points. This this becomes a focal point. But there's nothing there's nothing being said right here, um, and uh, so. But with these three main focal points, your eye is going to basically go back and forth, and uh, what you're really looking to do is is create a hierarchy so that one is stronger than the others because those are those are all about the same. Uh, they're all getting about the same amount of attention. So, in in. In looking at coming up with a fix for this, the first thing I want to do is actually extend this drawing or um, image a little bit. And the reason for that is something I didn't even haven't even mentioned yet. And that's that uh, anytime you have a character up against the edge that's you know looking in this direction, and even more so pointing in this direction and you put them right up against the edge uh, there's nowhere it becomes kind of un an uncomfortable uh, lack of space it's like putting someone in a corner no one likes to be put in a corner so we're going to give this I'm just going to add you know a little drawing to this and just kind of you know pretend that this extends on here and so I'm just going to get some value and kind of, we'll just pretend that we've got a little bit more going on out here. Uh, 
just visually to kind of feel like we've got a little more space there to work with. Um, okay. So then the next thing is, I'm, I'm thinking, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm thinking about moving this guy out, and I actually, I actually already uh, copied your guy here so that I can actually move him, which will kind of defeat the purpose of creating that extra space as far as making it comfortable. You know, one thing that we could do, I want to move, I want to move this out so that this staff can read dark against the light background there. So we'll see how this works out. In fact, I'm going to copy this layer right here uh, just so we can refer to it at the end. Um, and, you know, I think I'll also, there's, there's area on the back of this painting right here that isn't necessary. And so one of the, the key tenets of good design is reducing to the simplest form. So there's nothing in this area. If I crop right here, maybe right there, there's, there's really nothing critical in that area right there. And you should always look to chop away at your, at your drawing or at your design until you, you can't chop anymore. Like if I chop, if I chop anymore, that's, that's Jake over there. He's uh, sending packages out. So we might hear, hear him a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that right there, and maybe we gotta throw some white in there. You can you can you can use as much tape as you want. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so let's see. You can stick your head in too, so that people know. Down good. lower, a little lower, right there. <laughs> this is looking good. Oh, thanks. We got two of these guys right now, so I got to paint one out. Oh, uh, yeah, that's such a good idea to move move him over here, just so you can see. Yeah. That staff a little better. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. I just want to roughly kind of. So better. It's a good drawing though in the first place. Yeah. You're just flexing it. Yep. And let's see, I'm just going to paint this guy out right here a little bit. I know I'm not matching your texture, so we'll just have to pretend on that. Maybe we'll draw this in just a little bit here. Okay. And then let's move the whole thing over a little bit there. Um, we'll move this guy on top like that. And then one thing that I would do as well on this is to, to really lock in your focal point. And I would, I would extend this out even further. I probably should have already done that, but I think that that you, you guys already kind of get the idea there on extending and giving yourself enough room out, out here. I'd, I'd probably come out, you know, down, you know, something like that. Um, so let's get a multiply layer. And then let's really direct the eye. Now remember, when you're, um, when you're in control, actually, I think I'll come out further. When you're in control of your lighting, you can you can uh, imagine that there are, you know, this is especially with this environment. There, are, it's it's kind of like a, a set of ruins. So you know, there's going to be there's stonework. It's already indicated that it's fallen over, that it's broken, that it's crumbling. So there could be shadows from broken stonework anywhere off camera, casting shadows, allowing light through in places that you want the light. Um, casting shadows where you want the shadows you don't have to um, you know you don't you, you can you can fake it you can you can do what you want in this situation um, and so to me one thing that I would do is I'm just gonna knock this down a little bit I would I would knock the value um, contrast down on this guy back here on this whole thing back here really and 
and up here in this corner. And I would really, just by doing that, you'll, you'll notice if you look at um, really nice black and white photography, they'll, you know, look at some of the old Ansel Adams photos. Uh, he would always uh, try to arrange his subject matter so that the edges of his photos would go dark, which would focus your eye more into the middle. And so just by doing this, we're going to we're going to create a focal point. You know, there could be there could be a shadow cast um, right down in here coming across. Now that's going across our character, but then maybe the character has a beam of light on him. You know, so maybe we'll knock this whole thing down even further. Things coming out of the shadows are really creepy. You know. Um, and then we'll just erase some of this so that you could actually have the light hitting this guy's hand. And I know I'm not doing a perfect job on this right now, but you know, maybe he's in half light too. Maybe I know we've already got a shadow established for him, but maybe maybe there's just a beam of light coming down covering up half of him like this and then um, you know, maybe this staff up here is still kind of partially in the shadow which makes sense because then you've got this um, you can then cheat let's see we'll need another layer here and you can you can make the light do what you want it to do so that you can really get a good legibility going on on your staff here so it's kind of sticking out but then you could have this guy really you know having the light hitting him Kind of like we have right here. And that's going to really create a stronger focal point. It's going to push your your creature back into the background so it's a second read. So that becomes a second and, and tertiary focal point. Um, and then this guy in the foreground really stands out. It, it, it'll look more dramatic. So if we go back to the original, you know... Um, Right here, you're basically, in, you, the, basically the rule is wherever you have the highest contrast, in other words, the highest or the darkest dark next to the lightest light, doesn't have to be white and doesn't have to be black, but just that relationship has to be the, the, the strongest difference. That's where your eye is going to go in, in general, unless we're talking about color. You're not dealing with color here. You know, red colors then are create stronger focal points than cooler colors. But since we're just dealing with black and white, pretty much the rule of thumb is going to be wherever you have the strongest contrast. And again, from what I was talking about in the beginning, you have um, you have strong contrast. You know, right there, right there, right there. Even you know, even on this guy right here. And what I'm trying to do is basically come in and move that strong contrast into one main area. And I think if you if you look to do that, and there's a lot of your images on your site that fall into the same category, and if you just render a little further in the dark areas and you know and, and really really controlling that value, let's let's do one more thing. Let's look at this. Um, let's do a side by side or a top and bottom comparison. And then we'll zoom way out. So let's do. Whoops. Did not mean to grab that. Let's bring this down. And then 
then let's get rid of this a little bit here. And then let's just zoom way out. And we get into that uh, 33 three rule where, um, you know, an image should look, you should be able to tell that an image has good design from, you know, three feet away all the way to 30 feet away. Um, it should be more interesting in that realm. And I think that um, I think this one definitely kind of falls into that category. Let's do this too. let's 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 throw another layer up there. And am I still selected? And then, um, just gonna grab this. I think it's still kind of hard to see. I'm just gonna crop that one about the same. Um, and yours could be rendered a lot better. I mean, you know, this is just a quick look at it, but uh, I think this one tends to get you know, down here, your eye kind of tends to go all over the place, whereas this one kind of tends to direct your eye. If you look at, um, uh, if you look at design composition uh, books, and if you look at, um, if you look at some like, um, what's Jake? What's that book called? Um, Drawn ink or something? Uh, what was that? Framed, framed ink. Yeah, framed ink. That's a really good book to look at if you want to. Um, if you want to just see a lot of really good um, designed images all at once. Yeah, there we go. Hey, thanks. Yeah, no problem. That one right there. Framed ink by. You should, you should kind of show them a few of these, like, yeah, look at this. So, like, talks about how you would frame people. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. You're in the camera. All right, good. Yeah. Like this one, too, to pointing out, like, this gun is pointing this way, and then this one's that way, and that one's pointing down, and it's all like radiating out. You know, I think he actually. I mean, there's just all kinds of really good compositions in that yeah. book. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah. Um. Marcos Castillo Mestre. Yeah, and shameless plug: we have a creative composition. It's a a composition class on our uh, svslearn.com site. Um, if you want to actually take a class in composition. Um, so those are the things that I would do on this to make it better. And, and anyway, for any of you guys out there that are struggling with design, just remember the three things, the three components you have to have for a really good image are, for, I would say design first, drawing second. But you could say drawing first and design second, but rendering is definitely third. And uh, either way, you know, a lot of people I find that are really good at drawing tend to try to rely on their drawing skills to get them through without really learning design. And likewise, I, I know some people who are really good at design who really can't draw. A lot of those guys become graphic designers and they never have to really draw. But, if, but I've also known a, quite a few people who are really good at drawing, who never really get it and never really uh, become pro and the thing that's holding them back is the design. So um, anyway, hope this helps. And uh, yeah, catch you on my next video. Thanks.